This episode, all 4 by 4 spares have given us the keys to their workshop and given us the ability to go and have a look around at anything we want to poke, prod, feel and touch how this whole dismantling process works. This is a good one, guys. Grab a beer, sit back and enjoy. Well, the guys have let me loose in their factory. Let's take a look around. There is so many friggin' parts here and uh, the options are endless for Lazarus for engine conversion. So I don't know what we're gonna end up with. Well, I do know what I wanna end up with, um, but you'll have to wait and see. But for now, let's have a look around this bloody shop and the amount of parts in here is just mind blowing. I've got Dave here from All 4x4 Spares Dismantling. There you go, mate. Good, mate. Is this the beginning behind us, this dismantling, or is there a lot more behind it? Where does it all start? Uh, so it starts with purchasing the vehicle. Yeah, so where do you get most of your vehicles from? Most of our vehicles come from salvage auctions. So pickles? Yeah, pickles, Mannheim. So we've been through that recently, I know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it starts there, we purchase the vehicle, and then they come here into one end of our yard, up the, like up the start there, yes. and we test their vehicle. Yeah. And we condition all our parts. Yep. We check everything top to bottom, make sure it's functioning as it's meant to. If it's not, then it doesn't go into the system. And what's probably your biggest selling engine? P5 ATs. Which is? Uh, Ranger, 3.2 Ranger. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why that is. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Ranger owners, but it's a ticking time bomb. <laughs> Uh, time, no, and the gearboxes to go all. with them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you heard it here first. It's um, everyone that owns a Ranger just sticks their head in the sand with that. But it is a thing, isn't it? Like some cars do have their issues. They're not yeah, a bad vehicle, but, but I'm I'm gonna put something in there that they're also they were the highest selling vehicle for that's right. X amount of years. So there's yeah. gonna be a lot more of them. Yes. Because we sell a lot doesn't mean that they're not good. Yes. It means there's right. a lot out there. Yeah, that's right. You know? yeah. Um, I'm not a Ford fan. No, <laughs> I used to be. Well, I am actually, I still am. Um, I'm not picking on anyone. No, Every no, vehicle no. has its Achilles. Just a shame that it's the motor, which is pretty yeah. damn important. But um, Look, second highest is 1KD Hiluxes. Really? And they're my thing, I love them. But, which is, yeah. a, it's a, probably a volume thing as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's at all. Um, but they had injector issues and yeah, seals. Everything, and everything has its own issues. And then probably, what, a, a three litre patrol? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's pretty well all. Yeah, we're not going to comment on that. Yeah, so there's three engines I will not be putting in the 60 series. Mm -hmm. Right there. <laughs> anyway, mate, let's go and have a look around the shop. It's freaking huge. Yeah, let's go. So, uh, let's do it. So here we've got nine aisles of parts, right? Everything here is conditioned, stock numbered, tagged, located, and accounted for. So the sales guys can see any part in this warehouse, its condition, and the photos of the part. So that's to ensure the customer on the phone is getting the best quality part possible, Yep. and the most accurately described part. Probably another really good point here is this is really green business, recycling. Mm -hmm. Like it's not all just getting crushed and and yeah. wasted and melted down. Mm -hmm. um, in a world where we throw everything in the bin yep. and the electric revolution is about to just make that way worse, yep. this this still works. Absolutely. All the parts here still work. There's yep. no reason to throw them away. Electric vehicle batteries and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens, but it's not looking real good. Yeah, that's something we're going to have to adapt to. Yeah, and that's part of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, when common rail started becoming a, a really popular item, common rail engines, we had to learn everything we could about them yeah, yep. to benefit the customer, you know? Yep. And we'll do the same when it comes to electric vehicles. I'm just hoping it doesn't come anytime soon. So have you had those conversations as a parts and, and recycler? Um, is, is that a conversation you've had with, because it is, it's going to become a thing. There's going to yep. be electric four wheel drives. Yep. Um, and you guys are in the parts business, so yeah. yeah, is it something you're thinking about now? Yeah, we've had brief discussions about it. Yeah, right. Um, they're putting a lot of effort into it in the US. Yep. Um, and we're going to follow it eventually when the time comes, but definitely something we've discussed briefly. You need a bigger warehouse, mate. Uh, yeah. 
look, it moves quite quickly. So it, it's quite full at the moment, but that's the way we like it. These parts are not sitting there very long at all. It's like these gearboxes, for instance, there's a, a second hand gearbox ready to go that's been checked, washed, strapped to that pallet. If you call up and say, I need this Land Cruiser gearbox sent out today, we can just come down with the forklift, grab him, give him a check over, make sure it is still as accurate as we first described it, and get it wrapped up now. the door. And you ship all over Australia, no doubt? Anywhere you want. What about all over the world? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yep, we will send some things. Um, we have customers in Fiji, regular customers in Fiji. Yeah, right. Um, we buy a lot of Ford Ranger stuff. <laughs> Ford Ranger. Um, yeah, US, all sorts. Yeah, cool. All sorts. That is expanding at the time. But Australia, anywhere you want. Do you sell complete vehicles? Occasionally. Yes. Yes. So you will buy something from the auction that's maybe too good to just handle? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some of them break your heart to... Yeah. <laughs> to I could to imagine. Pull apart. Yeah. I so, could imagine. Yeah, depending on the vehicle. Short answer is yes. So you get vehicles from the auctions or wherever you get them. Yep. Where do they go first? So they come to our holding yard. Yep and then they are brought in for testing. What do you actually test? What's the, the main part would obviously be the engine gearbox. So Correct. what yeah. tests do you actually carry out? So we do a TK test to test for exhaust gases in the cooling system, oh, yep. which will point towards a leaking head gasket, cracked head and such. Uh, we also use an oscilloscope for a relative compression test and we run the vehicle when we can. Um, we pull the fronts out of these vehicles. Most of them are front end damaged and, and crushed in. We'll pull the front out with a winch, nice and safe of course. Get the fan free. Um, we've got a radiator hooked up to a, a trolley portable radiator that we hook all the cooling system up to, get him running up to temp and we'll take a video of that running as well. So once you've done all that and yep. someone buys the engine, yep. what sort of warranty do you give? Six months parts and labor warranty on used engines. Which would be terrifying sometimes being a second-hand motor that you guys don't know the history of so for you guys to actually put a warranty on it is yeah. uh, pretty amazing really. Yeah we stand behind everything we sell. Right so Absolutely. it's tested uh, yep. we know the parts are good yep. where to next? So then he goes through to the next section of the shed. It's a kid in a candy story. Right so they're all tested we're into the next shed. So all the panel is checked and conditioned and uh, next, next it'll go into the yard. Okay. Okay and it'll start getting parts picked off it straight away. So the guys the strip in the yard as well? Yeah, as parts are sold. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we get them on the hoist. A few different reasons for that at different times. Um, a lot of the time, our engines sell before we can even get them in the yard. Well, let's go and have a look at the boys pulling them apart. As a kid, that's what we all love doing, wasn't yep. it? Yep, yep. Don't have to put it back together. We've gone full circle, we're back in the workshop or the, the factory I suppose you could call it mate. Yep. yep. Uh, and so these are the hoists and this is where the yep. bulk of the disassembly goes? Correct. Yep. Yep, exactly. So this is where the engine box, dips all get removed and they get checked again at this point. Yeah nice. So it goes up into the racks where yep. we walked in and started off. So we've gone full circle here. Yep. That's how the whole process works and it's blown my mind how much goes into it. I, yeah, you just you can't fathom the, the sheer size of an operation like this. It's, uh, it's really cool to be able to come here and do this and be able to show you guys. So we've got a few hard hitting questions here. You guys are pulling these things apart all day, all makes, all models. Yep. What's the best built vehicle? It's gonna sound biased, but it's definitely Toyota. Oh. Without a doubt. See, it's gotta be. It's gotta yeah. be. Yeah. So why though? Why do, you, why do you say that? Look, you've got to have, there'll be yep. things that will stand out. What yep. are they? Just the general quality of the parts themselves yep. and the way they're put together, the thought that goes into them. Now this is both closely followed by likes of Nissan and so on, yep. Toyota's definitely top tier. Yeah, and a ja Japanese manufacturer have yeah. always had a good name for those, yep. those sort of things. Uh, probably a, a question would be the Chinese ute market starting mm -hmm. to really become a thing. Yeah. Are they any good? Have you disassembled many? No. No, I haven't as... had anything to do with them as yet. Okay. The call isn't there yet for yep. them on our end. So I have hinted that I am going to put a different motor in Lazarus, the 60 series. 
Will you guys supply a full kit for an engine conversion? I mean, engine gearbox, harness, everything you need to get an engine started. Can you supply that kit? Yep. If it makes the engine run, yep. we can supply it in a kit. Right Righto. Yep. Let's go and have a look at one. Let's go. Righto, so everything is here for an engine conversion. It's just so friggin' organized, and I had no idea that you guys did this. So we've got the engine, a big box full of all the accessories, and that's how it exactly gets shipped out. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. how good's that? Yep. So if you're doing an engine conversion, these are the guys to call. Um, all the parts are there for it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy a complete car, no. which I had in my head, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And um, they've gone and teased me and got a 1HD. <laughs> is that an FTE? Yes, it is, yeah. Like, I can't afford that. So that's not going in Lazarus, <laughs> um, unless I sell one of the kids. We'll do you as well. <laughs> uh, it's been awesome. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks for buddy. coming out. Done well. Well, I wasn't sure where to end it, guys, so I walked around the yard and tried to pick a favourite, um, and that was a bit of fun in itself. This old 70 series uh, in fire engine red with the uh, red rocker cover to match. I mean, how cool is that? That would have been someone's pride and joy, and it's sad to see it end up here, but it does go to show you the amount of quality parts and the options are endless for an engine conversion out of somewhere like all four x four spares. I've absolutely had a ball here today talking to these guys and learning so much about how this whole thing works. I never realized there was so much involved in secondhand parts and how cool of a job it can be. Um, genuinely, a lot of these guys were just so happy to, to be at work. And um, I know that sounds like a bit of a cliche, but they, you know, they were happy to see me videoing and you know, not always that's the things people want to do is to be on camera. So I was really grateful for that and I really enjoyed my day at all 4x4 spares. So we'll leave it there. Don't forget guys, you only live once. Get out in the shed and get into that project. See you next time.